Hi, Mike Stish here. I wanted to show off my new clock. I call it the binary burst. It's got sort of an interesting uh, way of telling time. It's got a USB mini B plug on the back. And when I plug it in, you can see it's going to do some uh, self testing and then it's going to show the time. Now, the way that this works is each of these spires is going to be a binary representation of minutes. So, one, two, four on binary, and if you add the two of them together you get five minutes. Um, and then in the center, these are bicolor LEDs. So um, this one is both red and blue right now, which means um, the red is the hours, so that's 11 o'clock. And then uh, if you add up the fives, you get to 50, and then two minutes. So um, in another minute this won't be two colors anymore, but um, yeah, that's how it works. So I'm still pretty early on uh, with finishing up the code for this, but you know, it might be a good time to show off um, some of the things that are on the board. Um, you know, obviously right here we have a uh, ISP header for programming the AVR AT Teeny 44 microcontroller. I, I programmed or I designed it for an AT Teeny 44. I think this is an 84. I did just in case I needed extra um, programming space. And you know, um, I have some extra features that I want to uh, try out that I, I might need that for, so we'll see. Um, over here I have a header for um, the I2C bus, which is nice. I used my bus pirate uh, from Dangerous Prototypes to um, kind of debug how this chip was talking to the um, RTC that's on the back. Um, other things on the front, I've got two tactile um, push buttons one for hours and one for minutes. I, those aren't hooked up yet, um, but that's easy enough later on. Um, I did have one design error. I, I designed this without really any prototyping and, and sent it in to be fabbed. And the day that I sent it in, I added these two pads right here. One of them is for a um, surface mount LED and one is for a surface mount resistor. They're sharing the same pin as this tactile button right here. And the thing I didn't plan for is if I was driving that LED, and you push the button, it's going to have um, a direct path uh, to ground and it's going to burn out a pin on the microcontroller. So um, these two can't be populated at the same time uh, without some kind of alteration. Not a huge deal. Um, also on the front of the board I have four transistors. These are PNP transistors which hook, um, hook up the four different rings of LEDs. I have blue, blue, red and blue, so four different colors um, on each. And uh, if we turn it around and look at the back here, um, this is my new favorite part of all time. It's a constant current LED driver. And this is a sync driver, so this drives the low end. So the PNP transistors connect one of the rings to um, the high side, and then this addresses individually each spire on the low side, and I'm multiplexing you know, four, four rings worth of color that way. Uh, we also have the RTC chip right here, um, which is keeping time. It's got this backup battery, a CR1220, um, and this uh, clock crystal, uh, what is that, 32.768 kilohertz. Um, and this uh, communicates on the I2C bus with the ATT44. Um, uh, and then this down here, of course, is the USB connector, which powers it. There's no data connectivity at all. It's only for power. Now some, you know, so far everything works. Um, this chip doesn't have hardware I2C and, you know, in retrospect, I wish I'd gone with a more expensive microcontroller because it would have made things easier. Um, I did use, I think it was ABR AppNote um, 310, um, but it shows you how to do software I2C um, with a chip like this. It's, it's got the example code and everything, um, but it was written for the IAR compiler and I use GCC, ABR GCC. Luckily, there was a user on um, Instructables who ported that over so that I didn't have to, and I've been using that. Um, I have no problem reading. I've had some problems writing, um, and I'm not doing any error handling in my code, and that's probably why I've had problems writing. So I'll be continuing to work on that a little bit. Um, other than that, everything works exactly um, the way I wanted it to. Um, other than the display, which I, you know, the, the way the time displays, which I showed before, um, I'm looking at... Um, adding some functionality. I think 
it would be possible to do some multiplexing to do some um, software pulse with modulation, which might let me do like uh, for minutes having all of the blue LEDs in each spire lit up and it could fade. So even though I only have five minute resolution, it would almost be like a minute hand going around. So we'll see if I can do that. And then, you know, there may be some other options as well. It just depends on um, what I can do with software. So um, all in all, you know, this is my first uh, Fab House manufactured board. I went through Seed Studios. I was very happy with it. Um, it took two weeks and four days, and I selected the slowest shipping, which the shipping alone could have taken three weeks, so that was nice. I got ten boards, um, and uh, I think all in all it was $33 delivered, um, which is pretty amazing. I ordered enough components for four sets of the clocks, and um, I had to get... It was hard to source the LEDs because I was looking to match the bicolor blue with the single color blue. Um, and I wanted bicolor red and blue, and I wanted them to be diffuse um, and 5 millimeter and all that. So that was a little bit of an issue, um, but all in all, I think I'm under $100 for the project, and like I said, I'd get four working clocks out of it, which is pretty good. Uh, yeah, I had made a video soldering the spires, and somehow I lost it. Um, I think I deleted it when I was cleaning things up. So, you know, when I solder the next one, I'll, I'll try and set up the camera and uh, see what I can get. You know, one last thing that I forgot to illustrate is um, a method that I used for testing the board after I had soldered everything together. Um, since the spires are rather labor intensive for putting together, I wanted a way that I could test out um, to make sure that there was nothing wrong with the board or with um, you know any of the solder connections um, before I started with all the wiring, because it, it is rather intensive to do all these wires. Um, and what I came up with this is this. It's just a um, five pin header and I soldered on um, four LEDs in the same orientation um, that the board is wired. And so this just fits into um, each of the headers like that. And um, if this was a populated board, I can power it up and um, I have a test pattern that will light each of these up in a row. And so I just go around and um, make sure that there were no problems with that. Um, just in case if I had any solder bridges on the surface mount components, I was not reflowing them. I was soldering them with a solder iron. So um, I wanted to check that. So that's how I did some testing. Well, you can read more about this at jumptuck.com, and uh, I'd love to hear any feedback you have. Thanks.